Congressman Rodney Davis, uh, you represent the 13th District of Illinois, I believe, right, Central and Southwestern Illinois. Tell us what happened. You were actually at bat when this happened. I was batting. Uh, we heard a loud noise, felt like a construction site. Somebody dropped a big piece of metal. And then the next thing I remember is somebody on the field yelling, run, he's got a gun. I ran into the dugout like most people on the field. The first base side dugout? First base side dugout. Uh, and then eventually worked my way out of the dugout to other cover and, and dispersed. And I, I got to witness the heroism of the Capitol Police that were there. It was part of Steve Scalise's detail. If they wouldn't have been there, this would have been a massacre of innocent people. They were only there because Steve Scalise is on the team, right? Ironically, yes, and our thoughts and prayers go out to, to my good friend Steve Scalise and also the staffers and former staffers who were shot too and the Capitol Police who were shot. How long do you think that you were hunkered down in the first base dugout? Uh, I wasn't there long because by the time I got there from home plate, I was on top of a couple people and didn't think that was the best place to be with a, an open dugout. And I immediately uh, tried to get out of there. So what our viewers cannot see is that you have a, you have a bloodied elbow and a bloodied hand. Obviously, there was quite a, a raucous as you were trying to get cover. So you get out of the dugout, and then where did you head behind it? Did you try to go for some? What kind of cover did you try to go for? Yeah, a lot of us went out behind the dugout and took cover behind a building. Uh, eventually, uh, when it seemed like there was a, a break in activity, uh, I and others we dispersed up into the street and across the street to take cover behind cars. Uh, then when Somebody yelled, the gunman's coming around the, the corner. Uh, we took off down the street, and the Good Samaritan led us into his apartment so that we could call 911 and then also um, call my family. So, this is, this sounds like minutes that have gone by as this is, is as you described. Well, I'm not that fast, so we'll wait to see what the final report is, but um, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're at, initially you, you take cover in the first base side dugout. You believe that the shooting was coming from the third base side, but obviously all of this is happening so quickly, it's not like you were able to get a look at the gunman, right? Yeah, I'm not able to look when I'm running away from gunfire, but from talking to some of my colleagues, yes, I was on the third base side uh, firing from there. Uh, but, but let me tell you, this, this, this hatefulness that we see in this country today, over policy differences has, has got to stop. You feel like the you feel like some of the rhetoric and heightened rhetoric. You feel like that is to is to blame for this. You know we'll see, uh, but yes, I believe that there's such a, a hatefulness in what we see in in American politics and policy discussions right now. Michelle, be it on social media and the 24-hour news cycle, this has got to stop. Um, we can be we can disagree on how to govern. That's what makes our country great. But I'm here because we're all Americans. And I think Republicans and Democrats need to use this day today to stand together and say, stop. Let's work together. Let's get things done. We can have our differences, but let's not let it lead to such hate. How are you feeling right now? I'm angry. You know, I got back to my office after obviously staying out there for uh, what I thought was way too long, but necessary to, because it was a crime scene. I'd never been in one before. Um, I went back to my office. And I took the chance to come down here because I want to talk to people about what I witnessed and about the effect that it should have as we move forward as a country. And that's why I'm here, bloodied in my uniform still, not had a chance to, to, to go clean up, because it's that important that a message gets out that the hatefulness, this political rhetoric hate, and ter you know, I would consider, we'll let the, the, the witnesses describe it, this could be the first political rhetorical terrorist act, and that has to stop. You are actually standing here in your baseball cleats and your baseball pants. You are in your uniform, and this is a, a game that is supposed to be for fun, and it's supposed to be for charity, and it's also a chance for Republicans and Democrats to have some good competition. Uh, tell me about that and just what it's like to go to practices, what it's like to go to the game, and now with this having happened, just how that makes you feel about what is supposed to be really a wholesome event. Well, this is an event where we raised over $600,000 for local D.C. charities, and Republicans and Democrats in a bipartisan way come together to play a game. And we have kids in our dugouts. We have staffers and former staffers that practice with us. I mean, these aren't just members of Congress. And, and you would think when you turn on the 24-hour news cycle that no Republican like me ever talks to a Democrat. That's just not true. I, I catch in the game. 
And, and you can ask every single Democrat. I jaw with them. We have fun. It is a great opportunity, and I never thought I'd play a baseball game for charity, go to practice at 6.30 in the morning, and have to dodge bullets. How does this change the game, and how does this change just how members of Congress are concerned about their security? Well, it has to change. I mean, this, is a, this has to be a breaking point. I asked a question earlier, um, is this America's breaking point when it comes to the political rhetoric that's become so hateful? It's my breaking point. That's why I'm here talking to you today. We've got to end this. We've got to stop it. Because I watched my friend and my fellow member, Steve Scalise, lay motionless on the field, wondering if he was going to be OK. That is a picture I will never forget. He is in surgery. I'm, I'm sure that you know that and you I have do. an update. He, is, he was able to talk to his wife, so we know at least that he was, uh, you know, awake and able to do that and that, uh, you know, the prognosis is good. It's a, it's a hip injury. You do feel, though, that this was targeted, right? Well, I don't think it's a coincidence that no bullets were fired outside of that baseball field. And, and so... When you think about the possibility of that, is it the routine with which the practice takes place that also makes you think this wouldn't be that hard to figure out who all is in the park uh, at this time? It's not that difficult. There's plenty of press stories about how we practice, how this game's important to the local D.C. charities. Um, we talk about it because we love the game. We never expect to have to, to deal with what we dealt with today when you're trying to play a baseball game for charity. And... That's why we've got to make this day our day where we say the political rhetorical hate ends. All right, Congressman Rodney Davis from Illinois, thank you so much for joining us here in Statuary Hall with your account. We do appreciate it. And also, uh, important to note, Wolf, that Congressman Davis, as well as other members on the team, feel very strongly about continuing with the game tomorrow night. We don't know if that's going to happen, but certainly there is a spirit that this game should go on uh, and that it, it shouldn't be called off, uh, certainly entirely. We'll see, though, what happens. Yeah, the game is supposed to take place at Washington Nationals Park. Tomorrow night, uh, we'll see if that's postponed.